weekend's over, time to check out what's been going on on the inter... What the... Arrowhead, Sony, Drake, Kendrick is killing him! Wait, this has a happy ending? Okay, so that was practically my reaction to the event that transpired over the weekend as I woke up on Monday. I would have initially covered them over the days that passed, but unfortunately on Friday as my daughter came back from daycare, she woke up on Saturday uh, looking as if she had been in a fight with the pitbull of the woods, if said pitbull was Mike Tyson. Yeah, she had a swollen eye because of an eye infection and her mom had lower body cramps, which unfortunately were not caused by me this time. <laughs> no, but on a serious note, the dumpster fire that was the Helldivers 2 PSN drama was a situation that I learned about on Friday that just kept getting worse as the day went. Fortunately for us, it ended up in a good note, but as a refresher for those who, much like myself, actually got to spend the weekend outside, I wanted to do a little bit of a summary to cover the whole thing. So let's do a little bit of a timeline to this entire epic. On May 3rd, 2023, Sony woke up on the wrong side of the bed and realized that the day was likely going to be a bad day and decided to make it worse for everybody else, starting with a strategic value absolute. For you see, after months of players having fun and enjoying freedom in all of its form, even when it meant killing your teammates, Sony decided to reactivate a mandatory connection to the PlayStation Network that initially made it impossible for players to play the game during the launch phase. Yeah, remember that when you couldn't play the game, when you definitely could not log into it? Yeah, I remember and apparently it wasn't just a server issue. What I have right now, the latest game that I tried to play is Helldivers. And I really thought that, oh, I'm gonna have a swell time today. I've played this thing for 13 minutes. The game crashed. Let's see if the game can actually play now. Oh, they have an update. About fucking time. How big is it? Holy shit. 18 gigs. Yeah, that situation was quite infuriating and actually caused a lot of people to dislike the game when it launched. And uh, I, for one, did refund the game back then and only bought it again on March 20th, thinking that everything was going to be fine. And it was until a couple of days ago. I'm getting off course here. Let's get back on target. Sony put up this account leaking update that said the following Attention, Helldivers. Due to technical issues at the launch of Helldivers 2, we allowed the linking requirement for Steam accounts to a PlayStation network account to be temporarily optional. That grace period will now expire, see details below. Account linking played a critical role in protecting our players and upholding the values of safety and security provided on PlayStation and PlayStation Studio games. This is our main way to protect players from griefing and abuse by enabling the banning of players that engage in that type of behavior. That's it also allows those players that have been banned the right to appeal. As such, on May 6, all Helldivers 2 players on Steam will be required to connect their Steam account to a PlayStation Network account. Current players on Steam will start to see a mandatory login from May 30th and will be required to have linked a Steam and PlayStation Network account by June 4th. This is insane. It's PlayStation Network accounts are free and easy to set up using this link. Aren't, but I don't want to. We understand that while this might be an inconvenience for some of you, this step will help us to continue to build a community that you all are proud of. Many thanks for your continued support of Helldivers 2. On May 4th, gamers woke up to the news and were, to say the least, a little bit perplexed. The responses were initially mixed. Some, like myself, didn't really care because it didn't really make sense. If you played any of the recent PlayStation exclusives that had made their ways to Steam, you will know that creating a PSN account was entirely optional. I certainly never made another one. I have one, but the, the name there was using my old account. It, it's, it sucks. So it made little sense to enforce a thing that had never been used. Other displayed an attitude that in a way could be confused as shilling for Sony, as they fairly pointed out that this feature was implemented from the start. And if anything, the real thing that one should have been worried about was the kernel anti-cheat that comes with the game. The hackers, the more woke. woke among us, aware of the systematic failures of Sony, I'm actually using the word in the right way that it was supposed to be used, were worried about data privacy because 
because of the significant amount of data breaches Sony has had in the last 10 years. And they've had a lot and I believe that there's literally a timeline that a dude made on Steam about that. It's the equivalent of like 2021 where there were all those school shootings and a dude went out of his way to make like school shooting compilation. It's fucked up. <clears throat> But those were definitely some points and positions to have. But I will argue that those points and positions were made by those who truly weren't inconvenienced by this. Because for me, it was only after a little bit of introspection and a subreddit literally imploding that I started to side with the others. Those leaving 500 kilograms of TNT worth of dislikes and downvotes. Those living in the countries without PSN access in one of these countries. Because they would not be able to play the game anymore. And this wasn't just like a lack of temporary access to the game, it was your achievements, the product that you paid for. Even if you decided to make use of a VPN, that would quite literally serve zero purpose because that would eventually get you banned. And so in a rare case of unison on the internet, in the gaming sphere nonetheless, the audience that had been trained to fight as one, the men and women of Super Earth who defeated 2 billion bugs in 12 hours, took on arms and did what can only be classified as an orbital class dislike. God, I, I love, love democracy. democracy. I'm gonna be quoting Emperor Palpatine a lot here, despite the fact that he bears a striking resemblance to that dude, John Ricciello. Jesus Christ. It was just poetic, and this barrage of dislike and downvote and bad reviews continued all the way to May 5th, where the force truly was with the players as 100,000 negative reviews were sent, plummeting the game's review score to mostly negative. And what was kind of funny about this is that it rigged a lot of that situation with the Watcher YouTube channel that we had some weeks ago, where a bunch of people were conditioned to get a type of content for free. And this one was just suddenly hidden behind a paywall and expecting that people would not react negatively towards such a decision was just delusional. And mind you, this is a decision that was made by Sony. Sony who just cannot help themselves from shooting themselves in the foot. A company that would take hours to reset your password. Whose CEO decided to go back to using a fax machine. Okay, that's actually kind of base, but it's still part of a point that I'm trying to make here. They, like many in the big tech industry who are trying to follow a hype cycle, just cannot help themselves from taking L's. Now, some did argue that it wasn't that big of a deal because it wasn't hidden behind a $6 paywall, nor a $10 one, not a <laughs> Ubisoft $18 subscription service. And to that I say bull bucky is about sending a message. <laughs> well, some did in fact try to send a message and the targets were a bit all over the place. A good number of people were extremely unhappy with Arrowhead, taking to review bomb the original Helldivers, Magica and even Gauntlet. These are titles that Arrowhead has worked on in the past, completely unrelated to the main issue and of course what they couldn't say about the games, they said to the dev themselves. With statements like, how could they do something like this, they've sold their souls to the devil, they didn't have the balls to stand against Sony for this, which Arrowhead clearly was doing as they actually were strategizing and trying to help people to organize them on how to protest against this. Now, I'm not saying that they were blameless in this, obviously not. Even the CEO was aware of the inevitable PSN inclusion months before the release of the game and pulled the switch to turn off his implementation himself. As the company's sudden fall was ongoing, he took to Twitter and poetically expressed his sentiment about it all. So yeah, they definitely did bear some responsibility. But if I were to give them just a little bit of leeway, because of course it's not always just a publisher's fault, developers can be at fault too, by giving off statements like, sorry that you're feeling this way, <coughs> BSG, <coughs> Starkov, Arrowhead did not expect near as many players as they got. It was something in a ballpark of like 100,000 tops. And that number was absolutely shattered. Remember how they were suffering from success, asking people to not buy their games? This could have been a situation where if Sony was smart enough and actually invested the manpower into fixing this whole thing within like two weeks into the game's release, some people might likely have been like, well, Sony's involved yet, yeah, time to peace out. Ah, fuck it, I already have the PSN account, so let's just connect. But alas, as a counter argument to this, one could definitely bring up the video of Timothy Kane talking about how the implementation of like 10 lines of pseudocodes in a video game 
requires straight up four weeks to do so yeah that might explain why it took them three months to fix this but back to arrowhead because they were actually trying to do some damage control with arrowhead's community manager twinbeard clarifying the company's standing in all of this saying that it was sony's decisions not theirs and mentioning how they knew little details about the regional issues, thus giving a level of validity to the argument of publishers literally ruining everything by doing their job badly. A similar sentiment came across from the Discord community manager Spitz. And please hold on your horses, I know that plenty of people have some opinions about this person. Before you head to the comment sections and start writing an essay about it, they had this to say. Internal discussions are ongoing about the mandatory linking changes and while I can't reveal details, the response from our dev team has been pretty universally negative and we are looking for better options. If better solutions isn't provided for players who are in regions without PSN coverage, am I sure that we won't be making a requirement mandatory for those players. We are not going to force people to either break Sony TOS or not play the game. A pretty measured response. Now, Spitz did not quite know the magnitude of uh, the countries that did not have the PSN coverage and ended up having some weird back and forth with some players who were simply voicing the frustration with the entire ordeal as they were being called names here and there. And Personally, I will never be a Discord moderator because uh, I will lose my fucking shit. So obviously, people got more angry. This resulted in plenty of spams and people being timed out from the Discords who later claimed to have been banned. But bruv, you were banned because you were literally spamming. Now, Spitz did apologize and actually had some very good take, which was to urge players to keep review bombing. <clears throat> I mean orbital disliking the game, which would give Arrowhead more pull in the conversation with Sony. Now, how did that turn out? Well, Sony oh, doubled down on this whole thing, removing Helldivers 2 from sales in 177 countries and territories that could not access PSN. And to make things worse, for Sony that is, thanks to the diligence of some people out there who actually keep on cataloging the things that are updated on certain sites, it was found out that the requirement for PSN had been subtly changed on the PlayStation support page, with the FAQ looking somewhat like this. The part here that says that do I have to sign in to PSN? PSN to play a PlayStation game on PC, it says signing on PSN is optional when playing a PlayStation game on PC, obviously has always been, which was then changed into some PlayStation games may require you to sign in and link to an account for PSN. And what actually made this whole thing even dumber was the fact that us European players for example could still see the old page on the 5th of May, which meant that this change was localized, i.e. they didn't really think this through. They definitely didn't. The stupidity of this entire thing was pretty clear. Sony saw the unexpected rise of a game that at a certain point had to increase its maximum player count up to 700,000 and even still then had to cap it to make sure that the servers weren't strained too much. And with that of course came the opportunity of harvesting a good amount of user data. Now, I'm not an expert on the matter, so I won't exactly know what it is that PlayStation is planning to do with our user data for PlayStation. Like, what are they going to do with the fact that I have not been able to beat Ghost Runner? Other than the fact that this might aid them to embellish what they write in the annual meeting and proxy statement to say to the investors that we have big numbers this year. Like, that's my theory, that this is just to make the books look good at the end of the year. And I know that certainly uh, some uh, hacker bro out there is going to come at me telling me that uh, uh, Terra, uh, Terra Data and Palantir and even Snowflake I absolutely love the fact that that company is called Snowflake are actually going to use your data for world domination perhaps but if you know more details about the data usage from playstation data please let me know in the comment section below on may 6 as most players were waking up doing the stretches preparing to do their part in making the review score plummet in a rare turn of events never seen since we got them to fix sonic and add in those boss and shoes for shadow the hedgehog those are cool ass shoes sony actually caved in and announced that they were in fact not going to enforce the PSN requirement in Helldivers 2, just 12 hours after delisting it in non-PSN having countries. <laughs> That's fun! That's hard!
I guess that all of the hate comments and mails actually broke the fax machine. Uh, with the orbital dislike objective accomplished, many took to social media to urge their fellow hell divers to divert the frustration away from the devs, as their response actually proved to have worked, as they always were on our side. There was no longer a need for them to be caught in the crossfire. And on the hell divers subreddit, Operation Cleanup began, with players taking to Steam to revert the negative review to positive ones. It was a stellar victory. The Arrowhead team got flowers from the community members and the team thanked the fans and had this to say. Firstly, I'm impressed by the willpower of the Hell Divers 2 community and your ability to collaborate. Second, I want to thank our partners and friends as PlayStation for quickly and effectively making the decision to leave PSN linking optional. We, together, want to get a new standard for what a live game is and how developers and community can support each other to create the best games experiences. Woohoo! Yeah, so now can we have some more player emos, please? And balancing. <laughs> Now, naturally, many took to social media to voice the celebration for this, and one statement actually stood out to me under the response of uh, the CEO statement, which was from this user called Ocean, who said, Hope this is a lesson to everyone. We have powers as customers. The corpo are beholden to us, not us to them. Which, uh, while I do agree in this instance, this statement can read a little bit like saying the customer is always right. Which, you know, ends in in matter of taste. Because while I, like many, appreciated the moves that were done here, we have to remember that this was a very particular and unique cocktail. The Helldivers 2 community was not really fractured or split in how they were going to respond to the PSN issue. Yes, some already took to making it about a wokeness issue, here using the word in the wrong way, but there was an overall consensus that this was very bad for the people who were not going to be able to access the game and, in the least, a very big inconvenience for people who just had to link an account. It was also an effort that was rather easy to get on board because the game was already successful and working well. And I do doubt that this would have had a similar outrage were we to be dealing with a game that had yet to be released. The devs also played a role in telling people how to organize and telling you exactly the two things that you needed to do review bombing and continuing to show your disdain for what Sony was doing. It was an organized protest and while some people did in fact get caught in a crossfire, it did yield the result that people wanted and this is still unprecedented. If the Helldivers team didn't already stand in good terms with their community, this would have ended badly. On Sony's side, for example, they are preparing to add more PlayStation titles to Steam, with for example the Ghost of Tsushima Snyder Code on the way. This one requires the use of the PSN, and it's way easier to get people on board with an idea when the subjects of linking account or possibly making your own launcher isn't negatively talked about on every single news pages. Now, I'm not meaning to be a doomer here because I very much want to celebrate this move and I do understand the feeling that some are having that this is definitely something that can be the norm, right? We show to Sony that uh, this can happen when people are together protesting with this and of course when they are seeing these things, there is the possibility of them realizing, oh shit, we caved in for Arrowhead. What is going to stop other studios from doing the same thing? Well, one is the fact that some other studios may not have the collective community to engage in such a backlash. Boycott. Boycott was the word I was trying to use here and kick Sony right in the family jewels, right where it hurts, in the money, in the wallet by asking for those refunds and review bombing the game. And while this is of course natural to be hating Sony right now, we also have to acknowledge that without them, Helldivers will not be as we know it now. I'm not just talking about like the investment part of the game, also the fact that they as a publisher do of course end up doing some stupid move like allowing the game to be sold in non-PSN countries, but also the monetization incentive that they put in there. They could have required that Helldivers 2, despite its beautiful mission statement of uh, being just there to give a good experience for the players, 
ask for higher monetization costs. Mind you, as the safeguard that microtransactions often are, they could have asked to raise those prices. They did that with another franchise that they used to own. Bungie, Destiny, and what happened to Bungie as soon as they, for one, just one time, had a bad earnings call? They laid off a hell of a lot of people. So while Helldivers 2 right now is a PlayStation darling and is definitely in good standing with Sony, I do fear a little bit what might be happening to the CEO if they do not consistently deliver in the future. The game has maintained a good player base and is awesome and I hope that it continues because it's a good fucking game. But I wish that gamers at least would keep this in mind. Just like we've witnessed here, communicate with the developers if you have access to them. Many have decided to make discords where they actually have a community that is willing to communicate with you. Understand the point, understand the stranglehold that a company may have on them and try to organize to actually, you know, boycott correctly. That may yield to something positive in the future. And well, just good fucking job to all of you Helldivers out there. You are absolute chats for having done what you did in just three freaking days. It was beautiful, it was awesome, and keep on having a good time with this game. That being said, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next one.